The opening scene features a young woman, Mae Holland, who is kayaking in a serene lake. After spending a few hours there, she drives back home. On the way, her car experiences some problems, so she pulls over on the side of the road. Mae then contacts her helpful neighbor, Mercer, who soon arrives to take a look at the vehicle. He successfully repairs it in no time and helps her on her way. It is evident that he has a soft corner for Mae, but she doesn't acknowledge it. That's cold. Later, during dinner, Mae's parents also suggest that she date Mercer, as they believe that he's a gentleman. However, she doesn't welcome this idea. Apart from this, we learn that May's father has multiple sclerosis and that the insurance company has refused to cover its expenses due to high cost. The next day, May goes to her work at a call center and starts her same monotonous job. Amidst this, she unexpectedly receives a call from her friend, Annie Allerton, who works for a powerful tech and social media company called The Circle. Annie informs her that the company is hiring up to 100 people and that she has referred May's name for it. Hearing this, May becomes excited, and she drives towards the circle the very next day. Being a smart woman, she easily clears the interview and secures a customer support position. Now, her job is to assist users of the circle's products and services. Annie then introduces May to the many facilities the company has, from headquarters of different departments to leisure and sports. The same day, May has shown a demonstration of how to deal with customers and the metrics used to rate her performance. Starting from the very next day, May does everything she can to improve her score, but she struggles to surpass a satisfactory level. A few days later, all the employees of the circle assemble in a conference hall for a company-wide meeting hosted by the CEO, Eamon Bailey. He introduces a new initiative called Sea Change, which involves small miniature cameras capable of streaming high-definition video in real time. Eamon also mentions the moral motive behind this initiative to monitor and hold wrongdoers accountable in order to bring positive change within the community. The meeting is followed by a party featuring the artist Beck. It's a completely unnecessary cameo, but who cares? Shortly after, Annie leads May to a restricted library room, but not before making her say a verbal, non-disclosure statement. She asserts that what goes on in there is extremely confidential. However, they don't have enough time to explore, because Annie receives an urgent work call, prompting her to depart. Left alone, May returns back to the party, where she strikes a conversation with a man, but he also departs for work, leaving her alone again. Ironically, Beck is currently playing his hit single, Loser. May spends her weekend at home with her parents, who are proud of her for making it into the greatest company of the country. The parents are still trying to match Maker with Mercer, but she remains unenthusiastic about the idea. As they converse, her father has an episode, and her mom escorts him back inside. Feeling overwhelmed by this, May seeks solace in kayaking and cries out loud in the middle of the lake. As a new week begins, she goes back to the circle. While working, she is approached by two of her co-workers workers, who ask about her profile on the circle's social media. They encourage her to increase her engagement on the platform and participate more actively in company events. Furthermore, they indirectly make her feel guilty about not attending some gatherings and activities during the weekends. As they go on conversing, they find out about her father's health condition and that May enjoys kayaking. After they depart, May seems more determined to rise up in the circle by fully embracing all of its social networking tools. As the days pass by, May is able to enhance her performance score, which makes her feel even more encouraged. Now, she stays at the Circle's dorm even on the weekends and communicates with her parents via video call instead. One day, during a brief call with her mother, she learns that her father fell down and Mercer came to help. Just then, she notices Mercer's latest work, a pretty deer antler chandelier on their house ceiling. Mercer is either an artist or the killer from True Detective Season 1. She immediately captures its picture and shares it on the Circle's community group. This indicates that she is slowly embracing her new life. A few days later, May is approached by Annie, who takes her to the Circle's medical facility. There, she introduces her to Dr. Jessica, who makes her ingest a drink and has her wear a sensory bracelet. The doctor then explains that the data regarding May's health will now be stored on the company's cloud, and she can even access it via her personal tablet. The doctor also offers to bring May's father in for treatment, much to her delight. In the next scene, we see an ongoing event where the Circle's chief officer 
operating officer, Tom Stenton, talks about the need for accountability in politics. He then welcomes Congresswoman Olivia Santos, who promotes transparency via True You, the Circle's social networking site. This event is followed by another late night party, and this time, May tries to socialize with numerous attendees. A short while later, she spots the same guy from the previous party, busy on his phone. She approaches him and strikes up a conversation. After a brief chit chat, he offers to show her something. He then leads her to a restricted basement area, where the company plans to store all information collected by sea change. Through their conversation, we learn that he seemingly doesn't like the direction where the circle is heading. May then asks his identity, and to her surprise, he introduces himself as Ty Lafitte, the creator of True You. According to him, True You has grown out of his control, and its current utilization is not what he intended. He asserts that he doesn't approve of monetizing personal data by discovering guarding people's privacy. As a result, he has taken a back seat at the circle, opting to remain in the shadows instead of letting the company breach his privacy. May is shocked by all of these revelations, but she agrees to keep the encounter a secret. The following day, Mercer comes to meet May at the circle. She invites him inside, but he wants to talk to her right away. He reveals that since she shared his work online, he has been getting a lot of hate mail and death threats from people, accusing him of murdering animals. Mercer asks her to keep him away from the technological world because he's happy with his current lifestyle and he doesn't want people to know that he was the killer in True Detective Season 1. Just then, the people around there start filming him, prompting him to angrily storm off. Distressed by Mercer's reaction, May drives to the kayak store late at night and sneaks into the premises through a locked fence. She takes a kayak and heads out into the bay. As she ventures away from the store, the waters start to get rough. All of a sudden, a wave flips her kayak over, throwing her into the water. Thankfully, the Coast Guard shows up in time and rescues her from the danger. In the aftermath, the guards reveal that they were alerted to the emergency through sea change cameras, which recorded her acquiring the kayak and capsizing it. If her privacy were left intact, she'd be dead. The next day, May is summoned to Eamon and Tom's office, where she recounts her recent ordeal. She expresses her gratitude that there were sea change cameras that saved her life. Eamon then invites her for a stage interview at an upcoming event, to which she agrees. The scene directly cuts to the interview day, with the CEO introducing May on stage. For the first few moments, they talk about her near-death experience and how she was rescued due to the cameras. Then, through a smart, manipulative speech, Eamon comes to the conclusion that everything should be transparent and that secrets are lies. May, who is now in favor of transparency, shares her decision to become the first circler to go completely transparent. It means she'll be wearing a small camera and exposing her whole life to the world 24-7. As everyone applauds, especially the pervs, we see Anna and Ty, who are clearly disappointed by her decision. Starting from the very next day, May films her daily routine, from waking up in the morning and doing her most basic hygiene up to making calls with her parents and her work duties. As the time passes by, her transparency makes her a celebrity at the circle, but unbeknownst to her, it starts to damage her relationships with her loved ones. One night, she watches her parents through the sea change cameras and accidentally finds them making love. After this incident, her parents go off the grid and distance themselves from her, and she washes her eyes out with soap. The following day, while walking around the company, May spots Annie. She soon corners her in the bathroom where she has a three-minute break from her live broadcast. During this private time, Annie tells May that she has delved too deep in the circle without realizing its consequences. In the next scene, May is invited to a high-level board meeting in which Eamon announces support from almost all 50 states for voting through the Circle accounts. May then comes up with an idea. She suggests taking it a step further by making it mandatory for everyone to vote through the Circle. Eamon and Tom are surprised by her brilliant idea and approve it right away. Their Galaxy Brain master plan is to turn the entire world into an OnlyFans account. At the next company-wide meeting, May is given the spotlight as she talks about the beauty of transparency. She then introduces Soul Search, a new initiative to find anyone on the planet in under 20 minutes. In order to demonstrate it, she randomly selects a wanted criminal, Fiona, who has murdered her three children and run away from prison. As soon as the clock ticks in, millions of circlers around the world use their phones, sea change cameras, and facial recognition software and finds the murderer within 10 minutes. This earns May a huge applause and cheers from the audience, especially the pervs. Continuing further, May says that the program can find anyone, not just wanted 
felons. She asks the audience who they should search for next, and someone shouts Mercer's name. She declines their request, wanting to leave him alone, but the crowd gets restless. As she tries to dissuade the audience, Eamon steps in and encourages her to proceed. As a result, May reluctantly gives in. Within a few minutes, Mercer is quickly located in his isolated cabin. The people try to barge into his place while calling him a deer killer. Frightened and overwhelmed by all of this, Mercer rushes to his truck and races away. However, the people start following him in cars, bikes, and drones. I think I see Matthew McConaughey in the crowd. As he drives through a bridge, he's startled by the sudden appearance of a drone in front of him. This causes him to swerve uncontrollably and plunge off a bridge, resulting in his death. After this tragic incident, May takes a leave from the circle and total transparency. She moves back in with her parents, who are thankfully there for her support. Four days have passed since the incident, but May is still grieving Mercer's loss. One day, she calls Annie, who has also returned to her home in Scotland. She tries to convince her to stay away from the circle, especially after what happened. However, May seems brainwashed as she doesn't hold the circle accountable and still believes that the services can be improved to avoid such acts she even disregards her parents' suggestion and drives back to the circle. On her way, she calls Ty and asks him for a favor. Upon arriving there, May is approached by Eamon and Tom, who offer her a position with a more flexible schedule like Ty. However, she turns down the offer and just requests that a fund be set for Mercer's family. Afterwards, Ty summons May to the server room to inform her that he did what she instructed. He then asserts that he found so many things that are way too dangerous, more so than he thought. Following this, May joins Eamon in the next company-wide meeting and calls Tom on the stage as well. She explains how her connection with millions of people has helped her recover. She then holds up two sea change cameras and turns to Bailey and Tom, inviting them to go fully transparent like her. This leaves the two men completely stunned. The situation only gets worse for them as May, with the help of Ty, discloses all of their personal files, including the secret and encrypted ones. Now that they're exposed, the superiors cut off her power to stop her presentation. Despite this, the audience turns on their phone's flashlights, allowing May to reiterate her advocacy of transparency. Shortly after, she walks out of the conference hall, asserting that no one should be exempt from hiding their secrets. In the final scene, we see May kayaking, untroubled by the flying drones around her. The camera then pans out to reveal hundreds of video shots of numerous people from around the world. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.